the coordinate system, a system of lines that help us visualize functions. Functions can be as simple as a linear function to uh, whatever this is. So, inspired by an application called Desmos, I was thinking if I could make my own maths graph plotter. I mean, this is probably the easiest thing I ever done in my entire life, right? Right? To start things off, I created a window screen with 1000 by 500 pixels. Next, I wanted to draw a function. Drawing the functions can be made easier using SFMO's vertex array. Basically, a vertex array is an array of vertices. We can use that to our advantage by connecting the vertices by a line based on the given formula. So for example, if I wanted to draw the sine function, I create a for loop that iterates a value from minus 30 to 30. Then, I append the vertex array using the sine function. Then when we draw it, it draws a function that we need. So as you can see here, implementing the sine wave function wasn't that hard. With this, I can make functions with a vertex array. Functions like the linear function, exponential function, and even the tan function. Yeah, I don't know why it does that, I'm just going to ignore that for now. Now I wanted to create animations. Animations might sound hard, but it's easier than I first expected. I just update the position of the point of the circle based on the given formula, then we append a line that follows that point. The animation works, but it loops every time it finishes drawing. To fix this, I added a boolean variable called drawing. And when the boolean is true, I start the animation till the end. And when it finishes, I set the boolean to false. But if the drawing is false and the animation is still going, I stop the animation. Let's see if it works. Now it works. Next thing I wanted to fix is the rough edges on the line. To do this, I use what's called anti-analyzing. If you don't know what anti-analyzing means, well, anti-analyzing turns this picture to this picture, or basically smooths the edge. I think it doesn't need much explaining anymore. Implementing anti-analyzing in SFML is quite easy. I create a context settings and set the anti-analyzing level to 8. The reason being is since my graphics card isn't capable of 16 times anti-analyzing. And it's much smoother now. Now that I added anti-analyzing, I wanted to color my function. Now I can't directly color the whole vertex array, since it's an array, obviously. So to fix this, I get the current position of the vertex array from the update loop. Then I update each vertex's color in a for loop. And if I compile the program now, it works. This method might not be the efficient one, but as long as it works, I guess it didn't matter. Now drawing the function and adding colors for it is cool and all, but any graphing software needs at least the X and Y plane. So in order to do that, I use vertex arrays, yeah I think I will love them now, and use them to create the graphs. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying that I could have used a rectangle instead of using vertex arrays, and I knew I could do that when I started to write the script for the video. But I guess it still gets the job done so I don't care. One last thing I added is a grid. The grid is just an image with the same screen size as a window, but when I added the image, I decreased its opacity to 50%, since it looked better than this. Now it looks more like a function drawn on the coordinate plane. But every graphing software has an at least a text input so that we can input the function's equation. But before I added the text box, I offset the whole window by 200 pixels to the left. Why did I do that? Well, since it would be useful when I add the GUI later. Implementing the text box was easy. I took in an ASCII character and convert that to a character. And I increment the string by that character, and then I draw that string to a text using SFML's text to string function. So let's test it out. Two hours later. Okay, I found the error. Turned out I was supposed to add this function under this if statement. And if you compile it now, it works. I now have a basic text input and output. Now one last thing I, I needed to do was add the background GUI. So I made this terrible looking background image for the GUI. To add the GUI to the window, I first made a class called GUI that takes in the text box that HPP header file. Using this layout would be super useful, especially when I want to add more than one button. I can do it all in this header file. 
Then I added the image in the header file and offset it to the left. The text input was not in the correct place so I hard coded the position and now looks much better. One last thing I did was change the colors since they aren't looking the same. So I went to paint and change the color to suit the background image. It took quite a while to get the color I needed. And here's how it looks so far. Sadly though, I still haven't finished the project. There are lots of things that are needed to be added, like parsing the string, polishing it, and adding a lot of user interface. But I'll be adding all of this on part 2 of this video. So if you want to see it, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also while you're at it, why not give this video a like too, and a comment to tell me how bad I am at programming. The GitHub page for this project will be in the description, so be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching.